like poopery, you know, there's poopery for this. Wait, like, I don't wait, think- wait. So, did you hear that? Yeah. Poo puri. Wait. What is poo puri? <laughs> what? What is poo puri? <laughs> wait. Okay. Wait. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Poo puri. What is that? <laughs> Let's go home. Download the DraftKings Casino app now and sign up with promo code WT9 and play $5 to get $100 in casino credits. That's promo code WT9 only at DraftKings Casino. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. 21 and over. Physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Once per opted in customer. $5 wager required. Max $100 in casino credit awarded, which require 1x playthrough within seven days. Terms at casino.draftkings.com slash holidays on the house. Restrictions apply. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Therapy is such an important factor in keeping my anxiety at bay during the holiday season. Our, our anxiety. Our anxiety. Yes. <laughs> this year we are hosting my parents and also Jeremy's mom. And I'm so excited, but trying to get everything ready on top of the absolute stress that is Vlogmas has been a lot. I never take my therapy sessions for granted because it allows me to take an hour to just focus on myself. And what is a better gift than that? In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash WT9 today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash WT9. Welcome back to Wild Till 9. I feel like I have just, I just, I just feel as if on this boxing, on this wonderful boxing day. What? December 26th. Oh yeah, you guys do boxing day. Yeah, I think a lot of places do boxing day. Just America just doesn't. So is it just called the day after Christmas? I, I, not, there's zero points for creativity, but it is self-explanatory. The day after Christmas, literally, right. that's the name of it? Right. On a calendar, would it literally say the day after Christmas? No. Well, that's more of like a, like a, like a, it's not like a Hallmark Christmas card you would send. Anyways, happy Boxing Day. Happy <laughs> December 26th. To the pod, I hope you had a wonderful holiday. We are, um, we are, December to me is only, only exists in uh, Vlogmas days. So it is only Vlogmas day four today as we were recording this. Right. right. You're, you're, we had a lot of timelines going We've on got here. got a lot of timelines going on there. So it's only Vlogmas day four as right. we were recording this because we are um, editors, producers, everyone's taking a break for the holidays. So we are trying to, aiming to not miss a week. Cause I know a lot of shows take time off of the holidays are, and we honestly, don't want to leave you hanging. Producer show was adamant. Yes, we don't want to leave you hanging and we stand by that. Yeah. She said, I don't care if you guys have nothing to say, nor have you had anything to say for years. We've We're doing an episode every week. Exactly. Um, but I I have things to say. I have things to this say. This episode. I miss everyone. Most of my things to say are things that I learned on the internet. I also watched Saltburn last night, and there are so many things that I saw last night that I wish that I could unsee. Um, but I, I, I do have a burning question. I have two burning questions that I mean to ask you that I've seen on the internet that have been quite polarizing and have been going across uh, the people. I'm honored. The people of the internet. One, um, name a woman. Lauren. Oh, babe, <laughs> you passed the test. Great job. Okay, so for some reason. Wait, wait, before you say it, ask who would your second. Oh yeah, who would your second woman be? My mother. Okay. Oh. Wow, that is a green flag. Congratulations. Across you you really you really pass the flying colors here. I feel like I'm woefully underprepared, yet so somehow one guy answered Sydney Sweeney. Huh. I'd have to break up with you if that was your answer. And okay. then for why, some okay. reason why were you asking Crypto Craig this question? Oh crypto Craig. <laughs> and then for some reason a handful of other people just respond with Hillary Clinton. That's like the other go-to is that like either you're the, the right answer is supposed to say your significant other's name if they are of female descent. And, and then um, the, the, the red flag men, the red flag men right. have been answering just like the hottest woman they can say, or they'll name like an ex by accident or Hillary Clinton. I mean- It's been a really interesting social experiment. I will say, it reminds me today when they asked you to figure out your dominant eye. Yeah. It, it seems so- obvious in real time. Like, it wasn't like I was wondering who, which one to say. Yeah. Wait, I was right eye dominant today? Left eye. I was left eye dominant. But that's shocking, because I, I feel like I'm right. I think I'm left eye dominant. 
if you were to do the thing, you would pull to your left side. Yeah. I watched you kind of sit there and do it in the consultation. Left. <laughs> yeah. left. Huh, interesting. Yeah. My left eye is- We gave very little context to this. Yeah, I know, we'll, we'll get into this. Uh, it, you, I, literally, I thought for sure I was being a smart ass by just saying your name quickly. No, great job. Oh my God, what a green flag. This is the we first time- can pr We can get married. I gotta be honest, I've been around for about 30, almost 32 years, yeah. and I've been answering questions before fully hearing the question since day one. Yeah. This might be the first time wow. it worked in my favor. Congratulations, we can proceed and get married. Okay, the Thank next you. question um, that's been like a nice social experiment between couples that has been quite interesting is if someone came to you and said that they saw me in an argument with a stranger and okay. you weren't there, what would you just immediately assume that I was in an argument about? Uh, one of the dogs. <laughs> yeah, that's right. One of the dogs for sure. <laughs> yeah. Or like someone said something rude yeah. about a dog breed. <laughs> like a bully breed. That you <laughs> feel like you are the protector of. <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I also am aligned with that answer. That's kind of what I was thinking as well too. I mean, truly the only times I've ever, I'm, I'm ever like concerned for right. the vibe you're giving off in public mm -hmm. is when your love for Moose or Diggy is questioned. Right. right. Or like you feel like it is your responsibility to pick up the flag and run with it as like- For the bully breeds. The full like war machine for all dogs everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I also am aligned with that answer. Lauren told someone that they needed to be muzzled <laughs> once. She she like pointed out that hey, um, your dog needs to be muzzled in here, and Lauren said you should be muzzled, <laughs> which is hilarious. Okay, okay, hang on. We're missing the context. We're missing the context. I think we move on. Also, Air Canada reached out and personally apologized because there was an Air Canada employee, like one of the greeters. It wasn't like right. uh, one of the check-in people. It wasn't like a baggage helper. It was like a greeter. One of their employees. Also, if this is the attitude that you have as a fucking greeter, get fired. Get absolutely fucking fired. Everyone has bad days. So, no, no, no. I guess this bitch had been bit by a dog when she was younger. It wasn't even a bull terrier, just a, just a dog. I mean, to be fair, I'm scared of my own butthole based off of a, you know, a war story with a suppository from my grandmother at age three. Sure, so, so, and then you don't go out and you don't exploit your butthole trauma to other people. And you don't, you like, you don't like wreak havoc and violence on other people's buttholes. Should I be? Based on your trauma. Should I be? So anyway, this, this greeter lady came up and like no, no contacts whatsoever walked over and Moose was traveling as an ESA at the time when we could still fly with ESAs on planes oh, and walked days. over and said, that dog should be muzzled. And I did a 180. I looked this woman in the face and I was like, you should be muzzled. And then I also went off. Uh, yeah, I'm thrilled that I was not in your life at that point. Oh my God. The way that, like, I feel like in books, when they um, try to make the reader visualize about blood boiling, mm. that's one of those moments where I can oh, yeah. immediately just remember a thin I, bead my, of sweat my drips down blood her brow. Yeah. was simmering in my veins. What would you, okay, just out of curiosity, and then we should yeah. get back on topic. What do you, if I had been with you yeah. at the time, standing there holding whatever, what, what type of support would you be most interested in in that moment? Oh, I don't need any support. Got it. I am operating as an independent I just say, like, warrior. <laughs> you, want me to hold, you want me to hold your bag? Like, <laughs> yeah. like I'll be right here if you need me. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't need. I don't need support. I'll just in scream in the back. Get your licks in. Do your thing. Yeah. Okay. Got yeah. It. Little little throat punch. Record. Yeah. No boy. Uh, <laughs> no mm. assaults. No physical assaults. No, just verbal. Just verbal. Yeah. No. Uh, just yeah. make her make her think next time she takes a shower. Anyway, so then the Air Canada, because I made a vlog about this afterwards. It was literally just the most out of pocket thing I've ever experienced. It was so out of pocket. It wasn't like she had approached me and been like, hey, are you traveling with an ESA? Right. Do you have paperwork? Are you registered? I'm and the answer everything. to all those things are yes. I have like paperwork submitted. I have I have digital, I have physical copies. Like I've, I've checked all the boxes here. He's labeled, like all of the boxes are checked. It was just so fucking out of pocket the way that she walked up and dropped that. It was shocking. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry fucking Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. I hope that woman is fire. Merry Kwanzaa. Everybody else's religion, marry that. Uh, I'm glad we've I'm got that off our list. How did we get here again? Oh yeah, that was the question that, that people have been asking their significant others on okay. social media. And I passed two, like two for two, like mom number two is okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's, that's a, that is green flags away. Now like, had I said mom first? 
Um, I would have also accepted that, but that's not, that's a- uh, Mom first, and yeah. then um, someone who's a great performer second. Mm. But not hot, not attractive, objectively average looking. I don't know, because I, I feel I, I've, I lean towards that being okay because it's someone that you would respect. Mm. But also it's like, if you respect them, what about me? I, you know? yeah, well, obviously, you know where my heart lies. Listen, your answer was great. <laughs> you know what else I learned this week? Can't wait. And no, uh, we talked about this because I, and I just need to share this with the world for the people that don't know, because I don't know how many this people don't know. This is the baby thing? Babies can't drink water. Okay, but didn't we kind of debunk this already? Yeah, but I need to I need to spread the good word of babies being dehydrated. Yeah, like the way that you pitched it the first time was like, if you see a baby close to a Fiji bottle, run and smack hands. You should. Well, I don't, I don't actually think you should. What right? do you mean? They can drink water. Right? No, 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 they can't. They can't drink water. At all. Also, do you know that a baby's at all. stomach at all, from like zero to six months, no water. I thought it was like, they need to not drink water so that they have enough room for the milk. No, they'll drown. Okay, no, it's Hold like on. it's like overhydrate. Hang on. on, hang on. Let me get the math. Let me get the science. I feel woefully. Hang on. I mean, not that I'm ever overqualified, but yeah. I'm particularly underqualified today. Okay, it's so- It's called water intoxication. Water intoxication, literally. Okay, so tiny tummies and developing kidneys put them at risk for both nutrient loss and water intoxication. By, okay. Also, baby tummies only hold one to two teaspoons. Of anything at a time? Of anything, and then it empties fast, and that's why they poop so much. Honestly, your bladder never got out of that phase. Yeah, true, I'm still there. And your hydration, depending on the day, also never got out of that phase. Yeah, that also is there as well, too. You've been doing great on hydration lately, though. Thank you so much. I hope yeah, everyone's having a hydrated holiday, by the way. Oh my God, with whatever liquid of your choice. Preferably a, a hydrating it one. It happens to be. <laughs> yeah, it's the kidneys, too much dilution, this dilutes the fluid in your bloodstream and lowers the concentration of important electrolytes like sodium. Is there any reason that you're universe. on baby talk, by the way? No, no, no. This was actually more just like people who don't have babies talk. Oh. Because someone, uh, the people info. who have babies, like baby talk, those people know this. This is general info I, to them. Also, to me, this was shocking. Okay, but I also, if I believe anything, all of my, like our friends who are having their first child, yeah. they're all just finding out this shit in real time. Oh yeah. And just adjusting. It's like, oh, so no more water? Got it, no more water, got it, cool. The way that I would not have ever thought about it I've also seen people all. like give dogs snacks that I'm like, y don't do that. Oh yeah, I've seen so many people feed their dog avocado toast. Where I'm like, hang on. I'm like, no. H hang on, but also, what? There should just be like a, a like no-no list. But I feel like, I feel like, I guess the dog no-no list though, we just like spend our whole lives Googling like, can my dog eat broccoli? It's like you do that more than the often. I just feel like we could have done yeah. like two days, like less of palindromes in grade school. The fuck's what? a palindrome? Okay, three more days of palindromes, <laughs> and then maybe a little bit more of like, hey, what's what, a palindrome? What, this is not an English podcast. Okay. okay. Uh, God, that's not a math thing. A palindrome's not a math thing. I'm pretty sure that's an English thing. Is it? I'm 99 percent sure. Show. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, well, English. Wait, do you want to know what? It is? Yeah, I do want to know I what a palindrome Lauren, is. You, well, I guess you both don't know, but Lauren, you should definitely guess. No, palindromes are um. I thought it was a shape. <laughs> a parallelogram. parallelogram. It sounds like like a hexagon. A, a parallelogram. It's like a series of things, or like like a, a palindrome is the same forwards, forwards and backwards. And backwards. Like, on a, uh, like, like kayak. Oh, like kayak. kayak. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I actually know a lot of um, palin. What's parallelogram. Parallelogram. <laughs> I'm big on parallelogram talk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So anyway, so we should maybe spend more time with palindromes. I I felt very seen though in how many people didn't know because if you didn't grow up with like a newborn baby in your family or your friends don't have a new, like the only baby that I knew was me. Right, well, that's, <laughs> that was it. I, I mean, I also feel kind of like I didn't have like a younger brother or sister yeah. to watch exist for a while. Right. But then even if you did, you wouldn't be like tracking. So what, what can we feed this thing? Like, have you, have you changed a diaper before? Never. I never have either. Wait, you've never changed a diaper? Besides diggies. <laughs> <laughs> when Dickie was in his diaper we did, era. We did used to yeah. change his diaper often. And wow, I'm not thrilled with the idea, but I'm cautiously optimistic. Cautiously optimistic. Yeah, when everyone pressures us to have kids, I want you to refer back to this episode when we don't know shit about babies. But also, how, why would I have changed a, like, if I'm changing a baby's diaper, yeah. where are these babies' like parents? Like, right, 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 right. I right. should not be- I held Remy's nephew. 
Did you drop it? What? Did you drop it? No, I didn't drop it. But like, don't you think when someone like, <laughs> oh, here, hold this baby. I'm like, I'll drop it. I yeah. can't. No, no, normally, normally I, I, I'm like, when people are like, oh, do you want to hold him? I'm like, no, no, that's okay. No. I'm not like, I'm not like drawn. Like my aunt, if there's a baby within like, a, like a 10 mile radius, she wants to hold it. And she's like, dr- like a magnet to babies. Now I enjoy talking to toddlers. Well, toddlers are so funny. Just toddlers, the way that their brain yeah. like processes things is so hysterical. I thoroughly like like enjoyed the period of my life when I was teaching kids mm-hmm. like their first musical instrument yeah. like for drums. There's something about, which is of course an awful idea when you think of like, here's these drumsticks, hit them on stuff for an hour every week. Yeah, that's can every parent's nightmare. worst nightmare. But you can be as sarcastic as you want. Right, and they, they don't they don't understand sarcasm. But like also it's like, it doesn't work on them negatively either. So it's like, you have to, if you don't find a way to create the message in a way that is inspiring, you're the fault, like, you're the problem. And right. also you only have a blank canvas to work with. Paint something nice. That's and also that so nice. They're so um. I feel down. like you, you were probably like a babysitter for a little bit, right? Uh, what's funny is when you teach kids music, mm-hmm. you don't realize that you're going to be a babysitter. You are a babysitter. And some parents- I think you forget that I also taught music. Couldn't be. Remember? I do forget this, yeah. Yeah, I was but, gonna say, you're saying that as if I also didn't I teach music for four years. I think the only difference because I did it without like a, like half a time, there was no company that I was working at. It was uh-huh. just like me, parent, kid. Right. So I was like, I'm going to be the one that's either gonna like make this, you know, productive or not. And some parents don't care at all whether right. or not the kid actually does it. And some kids, like they do a lot. Yeah. But some are just like, hey, would you mind like doing a two or three hour? Well, if you just picked them up. Two or three hours? Uh, there were two kids where I would go drive to their school, pick them up, oh go take my them God. to- Oh, uh, that's my a babysitter service. Totally. And the pay was quite wonderful. Nice. Yeah. So there was that. But I would never want to do that for just anybody's kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I worked straight at minimum wage for this job. Yeah. And I, every every kid was only half an hour. And so half like, hour? That is not, I would never do a half hour. That is not no. enough time to like settle down a child no. and then get into a learning thing. And then at the end, the last five minutes are spent with the parent also, reviewing pay, what you did. Piano listens to like half scales anyway. Let's yeah. just warm up. I know. I know. Exactly. 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 Do you know do you know your scale still? I can probably get through a few scales. Okay. Yeah. All right. Probably Major and minor. What? Major and minor? Major and minor, maybe. But and how many minor modes? I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You lost me here. Next up. Yeah, I don't know. So um, the LASIK journey continues and has well, come to a dramatic close as of today. What? That's not true. What do you mean? The end of the chapter that might be the end of the, like there could be, there still could be LASIK. No, there cannot be LASIK. Oh, that's right. This is the end of the chapter. I'm just telling the story poorly. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. So. The dramatic, dramatic conclusion today um, unfolded. Happy Vlogmas Day 4. Um, so essentially I went today for the consultation. So I was booked for- We? We went today for the consultation. I was booked to go do the procedure next Monday. So a week from today. Well, originally it was, why don't you come down do the consultation and then just go they, right into the, it. A couple of days ago, she was like, are you sure you don't want to just do a day of? And I was like, no, 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 The way that I would have been like- If we had gone through all the precautions, and it, go ahead. Right, and like had the things prepared at home, like ready. I had my sleeping pills. I had my like calm. I, we had Spoiler snacks alert, ready. You're not getting LASIK. I know. I'm, yeah. So so. Anyways, so we go for the consultation today. We do my um like eye check test. She tests the pressure of your eyes, which felt fucking crazy, by the way. Nothing touches your eye, and it's not when they shoot the air puff either. She like held this thing maybe an inch from my eye. When she said, "I'm gonna test the your eye pressure." Your eye pressure. I'm like. Okay. The, fir- the first time in my life, I realized I had eye pressure. Me too. It's like tire pressure. And so it felt so weird. She was like, it'll feel like just a little tickle. And like, that is the best way to describe it. It felt like a warm little tickle on my eyeball, when like four I tell times. You, Jeremy would have vomited. There are a few like little things <laughs> you can say that yeah. make me want to just curl up into a little ball and then yeah. just disappear. Mm-hmm. And that's one of them. When, when someone says like, when they're describing a thing they're gonna do, it's like an acute part of my body. Like it should feel like a little tickle. I am ready for the worst. It was not bad at all. I'm thinking to myself, is my will in order? It was just like the weirdest Did I clear my browser history? that I've never felt before. That's what it was. Before. What else could happen? Yeah. This is for sure the, this is the last time I've seen this is anything. The this is the end. Yeah. Yeah. You were a champ. It, th- nothing happened. But it could have. No, no, Literally, no, no. nothing put happened. Her, put her face in the, you know, the like fucking nine little optical thing, whatever. And what did I say immediately? I don't know. I was like, oh, I hate that thing. She goes, oh, there's no air. And I go, I don't believe you. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Wasn't yeah. even my. The, the puff is a little more jarring because you. Do, it's like more of the anticipation of like the big puff of air. It like scares you too. Yeah, yeah, it scares you a little bit. I don't like it. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't love that one. I don't, but it's more. It's more like the anticipatory I mean, anxiety. Who would love? It. Hey, put your eye here. And you, <laughs> exactly. No. Exactly. So do all of that, and she's taking photos of my corneas, and I we retook the photos a handful of times, and that's when I started like getting the inkling that something was a little bit off, and I was like, oh maybe like my eyes just like aren't open wide enough, or maybe like I I blinked at the wrong time, but I was like I'm I'm pretty sure I'm nailing my side of this. I feel like I'm excelling here. Like, do you need another angle and a pose? Like what's yeah, going like, what on? Yeah. What do you What do you need? Is what do you the need? light not hitting? And so then we go this and This is when do, I was in the car or where was I? No, you were there for that. Okay. Yeah. It. But she was just like, she was like, let's do another one, let's do another one, let's do another one. So I do it, remember it did, now some reshoots. Yeah, some reshoots. And so then we get moved into another mm. room and the doctor comes in and he basically is like, hey, I'm just gonna hop into this LASIK procedure really quick. Um, It'll be like 15 minutes. I wanna give you all of my time. I wanna give you like, what? We had a pre-doctor actually. A pre-doctor? Pre-doctor doctor. The woman who came in. Yeah, but she was just doing my, she was getting my prescription. Right. But I feel like she probably knew too. Oh, they all knew. They yeah. for sure all knew. Even like the techs who were taking like my, my I, well, I heard them in the, in the hall going, she's got thin corneas. Babe, spoiler alert. She's got thinnies. She has spoiler alert. <laughs> Stage nine thinner. <laughs> so then, so th that's like when I knew something else was wrong too. Cause he's like, cause he said, oh, he was like, I want to have a longer conversation. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, he's breaking up with me. He's literally breaking up with he me. He came to me like, oh, I love that you're here. So excited. So I'm so excited. glad you're here. Such a big fan. Like so excited. Skinny corneas. Ooh. So he goes in and we also can hear the procedure happening. Cause it's right across the hall. It Listening was, to Igu being zipped. It literally was like zzz, 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 It's not like zzz, a really big phone in the other. Right, or like when your phone gets stuck underneath the couch and it's vibrating, it's like zzz, mm, zzz, Yeah. Zzz, that's what it was like. And I was like, Jeremy, goo right now being zapped. Sizzled. Being sizzled. What do I goo smells like? That's not, it's not good. That's the one thing that people always say no one warns you about is the smell of the eye goo getting Ooh. burned off. So my, that was my mom's biggest piece of feedback. She's like, it feels like they're saying, oh, she also got this done so many years ago, but the eye goo burn smell, I think, I don't think they've, they've um like, like poopery, you know, there's poopery for this. Wait, like, I don't wait, think wait, wait, show. Did you hear that? Yeah. Poo puri. Wait, what is poo puri? <laughs> what? What is poo puri? <laughs> wait, okay, wait, <laughs> hang on, hang on. Poo puri. What is that? <laughs> I thought, poo? I thought we were having like a tech malfunction the way that you stopped that so abruptly. You know what poopery is? What is poopery? No. Oh, okay. The, the brand? Lauren, say it again. Poopery? I think she's saying it right. But what? I, I've never heard of poopery. Okay, so there, there's an actual thing called like pulpery. Right. 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 Which is like that smelly grass stuff. It's like scented. Every Everyone's grandmother had it. Everyone's grandmother had yes. it. My, my nana had so much pulpery with that had like little bath. Wait, how are you saying this? Okay, no, no, no. Hang on, hang on. Just wait. I know where I'm losing you. So pulpery, the thing, the thing that all the grandmas have. Yes, the scented You're like- You're pole? Pulpery. Pulpery? Isn't there an L in there? There's just po? Pulpery? Is it, is it there? I thought there was an L. I've always said L and the L in there, but there might not be. I'm so, I don't even know what I know anymore. Okay, so anyway, that's the thing that we both, grandmas have it, we know what it is, it's like the scented little shreds of whatever. Potpourri, yes. Yes, exactly. Is there an L? There's a T, not an L. Oh. It's like potpourri, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, hmm, throw okay. an L's in there. Okay, anyway, potpourri, potpourri. Pulper, <laughs> you throw an L's me, babe. I know. <laughs> and then there's a brand who made the product called Poopery. It's a little squirty thing. Yes. Okay. Okay. So now you know what, what the fuck. Where was this? Where was this I brain thought, cell? I thought you were referencing potpourri and not saying it wrong as poopery, oh. and I was like, "Well, that's no, 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 no." Okay, got it, got it. So you thought we were having? I didn't a realize. Suku. I didn't realize you were going to to pronounce it incorrectly a different way. Right. Three right. three different ways. But also, <laughs> I now have have never been less sure in how any of it's pronounced. <laughs> so I feel like we both right. are now in the same place. Yeah. Okay. Great. And then the brand uh, poopery Thank that God you we do spray the in the toilet before you poop. Before. After. Have you been using <laughs> poopery wrong? After. Well, no, I'm, no, no, I'm no, no. I'm never using poopery. No. Before. It makes the it makes a poo smell barrier on top of the water. I feel like you're being really hit hard with marketing. What it's do you mean before. A poo barrier? So it's right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've 
I don't read instructions very often. And this is, I'm not picking up a thing that is in the communal toilet that everyone's using when they're shitting uh -huh. and going, oh, let's see, when should I apply this? There well, was a, Go ahead. I was going to say the idea is that you would be using it before. Yeah, you use it before. Be less I would have thought nasty. after. Like, no, 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 no. That's like what people use Febreze. And then it just smells like shitty, like Febreze. fabric softener. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no. This is the product though. Like the whole point is it makes a little barrier of non-smelly on the water. Your poop drops in, it locks in the poop smell and you flush it and it goes away. And it doesn't even give it time to permeate the air. I can't imagine how- If we don't get a fucking brand deal with poopery after this segment, I'm gonna be pissed. I am doing, I am out here marketing. Two things. <laughs> I realize now that I am really yeah. someone who needs to start reading instructions. Instructions, yes. Not gonna do it, but I realize that. And two, I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to be able to circle back on my findings with poopery. Cause I've been, by the way, I've been, I've been for breezing poopery. In fact, if I run out of deodorant, it's a great secondary. Oh my God. <laughs> I saw someone spritz the air with poopery once and I was like, I was like, oh no, absolutely not. What are we, what are we doing? Yes. What are we doing here? Was it a dude? No, I think. Because men don't read oh, instructions. Oh no, it was a dude. Men don't read instructions. It was a dude. You're the, so the right. only The only man I know in this entire world that reads instructions. Gregory Mackey. Your father. Gregory Mackey. Good man. Great man. Patience. Patience, patience of him. Of a saint. I'm not, I have not read. <laughs> in, fa in fact, I prefer Ikea instructions. I also enjoy Ikea instructions. It's a little visual. I'm a visual person. I look at where I'm supposed to end up. Give me an Allen up, key and, and some I photos. Out. Yeah, I we're, can. We're gonna, we're gonna get here. I did try and put together a barbecue one time and I only got like 70% of the way. Then use that barbecue for five years. Yeah. That was a bad yeah. barbecue. Yeah. No, 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 no. My dad came and built the rest of it. Well, okay, then he good. had to unbuild some of it right. and then rebuild the rest of it. My favorite is what are all these extra parts? Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, I like parts. Do, why do they have so many what extras in here? They, oh, they look bonus, bonus parts. Is this electrical? Bonus oh. parts. Okay, so, so anyways, poopery. back to, back to my back to my story. How did I don't even know how we got to poopery from the the eye consultation? Uh, you spray. Oh boy. Yeah, I don't even know how we got there. Anyway, I don't feel great about it. He is doing his surgery, doing the procedure. This girl in there getting her goo lasered off, and he comes back in, sits me down, basically breaks up with me. The nicest man, and like. The way that he is just so morally ethical, like a Christmas savior, a Chris, a Boxing Day savior. To his credit, telling you when you were already in a vlog and do more for his business than the average customer was going right. to, because that's it's it's December, for him to be like, hey, I don't want to do this procedure on you, yeah, is only a net loss for him, right? And you got to appreciate that. Oh my God, no, a hundred percent. Because basically, the situation is that the cornea is the clear goo layer. It's not actually goo, but it's like the clear layer on your eyeball over the colored portion. And so I guess, I don't know what the measurement is, but it's 600, Millimeters? 600, whatever. I don't know what it is, but it's 600 is what a healthy cornea is supposed to be at. I'm at 480 and LASIK takes off another 100. But it puts it back, right? No, I don't think oh, so. Oh, it just scrapes it away? just takes it off. Just takes it away, got it. I thought, I thought it's kind of like it did. Lipo. Yeah. Life Lipo. I don't know about that. Boy. Anyway, so I have early stages of something Skinny cornea. Called skinny, cor skinny coronaritis? I can't, I keep forgetting the name of it. Oh. Of, uh, oh, keratoconus. Oh. Keratoconus is what it is. Bless you. Um, thank you so much. And so early stage of possible character tonus. So what what the next steps for me is that because my vision is not violently bad, even though Jeremy thinks it is, I could be a candidate for PRK, which is way more intense than LASIK. The downtime is much, much more. It is um pretty miserable, to be honest, based on the reviews that I've heard. It's it's not it's not fun. And so if I even wanted to get PRK, I'd have to get another procedure called cross-linking where I basically get my cornea repaired and get more goo added on top of my cornea so that they can do the PRK. And so that's two procedures that would not only would be very expensive, but is also a little more invasive than just like a 10 minute. Literally the girl that was getting her LASIK done, she was in and out in 10 minutes. They had Taylor Swift blasting. It looked like a good time. It did look like a good time. It looked like a fucking good time. And I wanted to be that girl, even in there, listening to Taylor Swift, getting my eye goo blasted off. Babe, you're not that girl. And it'll never be me. Well, don't say never. It'll never be me getting LASIK though. I think though. like medicine and you know, innovation, never say never. Yeah. And in fact, you might one day have lucked out by not getting LASIK uh -huh. and you can get something else. Yeah, maybe. So um, 
that's kind of where we left it. And he was like, honestly, some doctors would probably just be like, yeah, like, let's do it. And they would just fucking zap off my goo and I would never get that goo back. I and also appreciate him for saying that though. No, no, totally. Because had you gotten a second that. opinion, like it's nice to know if you were to get a second opinion. Right. That like, he's telling you there's a, like, there are gonna be some doctors that would do this, by the way. Absolutely. To me, that's helpful. Um, but overall, I'm just grateful that I, I feel like I know more about my eyeball, I guess now. It's always nice to know. It's nice to One know. One more problem One developing more problem. that you cannot really help. So even if I don't get PRK, I still have to go back in a year's time from now to see if my measurement is lower and my corneas are reducing even more because it basically, it's not, I, I was doing like a light Googling and it's mm. because I had violent allergies as a child. And so I probably caused some like literal physical damage from rubbing my eyes so hard when I had allergies. Okay, if rubbing your eyes ruins your eyes, I'm going to have no eyes because I stay rubbing. You do stay rubbing, but you'll never get an eye exam though. So we'll, we'll just never know. Fortunately, I can read the print behind you just fine. Yeah, but I feel like every old person ends up getting cataracts, so that could be you. Yeah, yeah. well, statistically, I'm getting cataracts. Yeah, for sure. But for like sure. at that point in time, I will just say, could you just end me now? Because <laughs> this three minute procedure is not gonna work for me. Right, 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 right. How much is <sighs> success rate, 99.97? I think what we probably just will have to do at some point is just knock you out fully. We can do up your the up the ass, down the eyes. throat, the, the endoscopy, the colonoscopy, uh, Somebody the else's eyes. like. I'll do your things. eyebrows as well at the same time. Like, we'll just knock it all out. What's wrong with my eyebrows? I've been ripping them out. Yeah, Jeremy literally just like takes his fingernails to like a rogue brow hair once a week and like rips out a few and calls it a day. It's the straightest thing that you do and it's so concerning. I can hawk more loogies in the shower if it helps. No, thank you. It's so disgusting. So disgusting. I love you and I am sorry. <laughs> I'm not changing. For some holiday excitement, DraftKings Casino is launching their holiday on the house promotion, and it's a game changer. Imagine a huge selection of games, impressive prizes, and promos that bring a new level of thrill to your holiday season. That's what DraftKings Casino is all about. Here's something for our listeners. When you play with just $5, you get an instant boost with $100 in casino credits. It's a direct hit of value, giving you more chances to play and win right from the start. I love that math. Explore a variety of classic games like slots, blackjack, and roulette. Or try your hand at exclusive DraftKings casino games. It's more than just playing games. It's about enhancing your holiday entertainment with a bit of extra excitement and chance. Download the DraftKings Casino app now and sign up with promo code WT9 and play $5 to get $100 in casino credits. That's promo code WT9 only at DraftKings Casino. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. 21 and over. Physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Once per opted in customer. $5 wager required. Max $100 in casino credit awarded, which require 1x playthrough within seven days. Terms at casino.draftkings.com slash holidays on the house restrictions apply. So that's the uh, dramatic conclusion to the LASIK surgery. I feel like I've done so much research and talked to so many people about it that I was so mentally prepared for this. So to, if you are booking your LASIK appointment below, let us know uh, that we inspired you to get better vision because Lauren's is going to say the same. But I kind of it's kind of endearing when you're mad at me or when you say something across like, you know, the room. And I can't see you. And you kind of give me this look of like, I, I can't look at whatever looking you're yeah, giving me. Yeah, well, some people give me like a stank face. And I'm like, I don't, yeah, it actually is nice on my side too because I can feel that you're giving me a purposeful like attitude face. And I'm like, ha ha, I can't even see your face. It's lost on me. Well, isn't that nice? <laughs> Isn't that nice a little and mature? In defense mechanism brought to you by evolution. <laughs> so I'm just gonna be out here squinting and wearing my little glassy glasses, and uh, that's the end of the laser. You look so cute in your glasses. I know, but it's just I would just love to be able to see. That yeah. sounds so nice. Maybe, maybe one day. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. There's a crazy one called ICL where they implant a contact no. into your eyeball. No. Nope. Isn't that no. wild? No. I would rather get Neuralink <laughs> as a beta as a beta tester. Oh my god, that's I'd rather wild. be the test flight yeah. for, 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 for Neuralink. Neuralink. Yeah. Okay. Because that's like back here. 
whatever. Anyway, so Jeremy's just relieved because now he doesn't have to see any eyeball things or like deal with it or hear about it anymore. And that's the end, the conclusion, I the end. I know that's like, I don't really, like the thought of you being really useless for a few days and like needing a lot of help, that part would not have bothered me at all. No, not about that, but you just like having to be in the room while like, I get my Google Oh, goo I, I'd rather be anywhere else. Yeah, exactly. So like, I just feel like there's also a part of me that's relieved because obviously like it's, it's kind of scary. Like you're obviously nervous going into it. And now I don't have to tell anyone, like I didn't not do it because I got scared and backed out of it. Like I'm not doing it because I physically cannot. Do you think they're gonna buy the story that you made up today? Do you think? I am a victim of, of keratoconus, okay? And the Keratoconus representation that I now stand for. By the way, is this a very common thing, I wonder? I don't know, actually. Let me see. I, I've never heard anyone that got denied. I, this has like just happened so recently that I haven't done a ton of research you on it. You haven't added anyone to like the Facebook group? Keratoconus. Like, support? Here we go. Okay. I'm going to start waking up in the morning. How's your Keratoconus? A condition today? in which the clear tissue on the front of the eye, the cornea, bulges outward. Ooh. The clear dome-shaped tissue that covers the eye thins and bulges outward in a cone shape. So Thins that's why- and bulges? Yeah, yeah, so, but I I have really, really early stages, so I'm just thin. I haven't er, bulged yet. Early onset character. Yeah, I have My bulge, my cone shape isn't happening yet. Um, fewer, rare, fewer than 200,000 cases a year. What the fuck? You really were rubbing. Causes constant inflammation from allergies or irritants can contribute to the destruction of corneal tissue that may result in developing keratoconus. Not the corneal tissue. Ah, uh, environmental factors are thought to be involved. Well, maybe a few less uh, eyelash. Chronic eye disorder, which means it's for life. At what age? I normally find keratoconus during your teen years or your 20s okay, and 30s, should, okay. but it's start in childhood. Hold on, hold on. Let's, do, let's do okay. <laughs> let's do a, a WebMD spiral after the pod. Oh my God. Oh my God, I'm gonna get cone corneas. <laughs> uh, Coney corneas? I'm gonna get cone corneas. Can cause blurry, distorted vision. No. I mean, you kind of already have that. Can slowly worsen over time, usually asymmetrical. I mean, we knew that. Does not cause blindness. But also, Thank God. What gets better over time? Yeah, that's true. Uh, can only be corrected with, oh, hard contact lenses or surgery. Uh, can I live a normal life with keratoconus? Well. Your day-to-day -day life shouldn't be affected. It's literally the least of our concerns. This is wild. Okay, wait, this one says though relatively common, affecting 50 to 200 in 100,000 people. I wouldn't exactly say that's common. <laughs> oh that's a, man. That's a few, few zeros before that one. Anyway, um, thrilled that you've got a new problem. Perfect. We were looking for those. I, I mean, overall though, I just genuinely am so grateful that we went with the consultation and now I know about it. We can like keep an eye on it. And that's a little corny, I didn't mean to say that, but like we can we can monitor it throughout the years and I can go back in a year and hopefully- Babe. What? You said it the right way the first time. <sighs> Come on. So cheesy. You can keep an eye on it. I'll keep an eye on it. A coney eye. <sighs> keep a coney eye on it. Well- A coney corny eye on it. On that note, <laughs> see you guys. <laughs> Um, let's talk about you though, because you went home for Thanksgiving. Well, I missed last episode. I'm, I'm not even caught up on Wazzle 9. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, no, we really, we really were, um, Jeremusseying the- well, can, you, can you give me a theme? I haven't even, I haven't seen the episode yet. As Am if gonna you're gonna watch. Literally, Kelsey gave you such like a nice like monologue to camera. She was like, Jeremy, I know you're watching this. Like da 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 And I was like, Jeremy hasn't watched a single fucking podcast episode after it's gone That's out. That's not always true. How many episodes of 165 Five. have you watched? 65. I That is a fucking- The first 65. The fir right, before we got producer show to help right. revive. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, what huh. did I say that was particularly right. stupid this mm -hmm, week? Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. anyway. Anyway, she gave you a nice little monologue and she was very nice. And she we were just like, you're putting your whole Jeremussy into couples therapy. And the episode was great. Why am I putting my Jeremussy into it? Um, and also, where is my Jeremussy? Do you really want to know? No, I don't. <laughs> keep it moving. Merry Christmas. More, more about me. <laughs> um, but no, you went home for Thanksgiving and I feel like you went and healed childhood trauma. Uh, well, I don't know about healed it. Okay, you worked through some major childhood trauma. Well, yes, no, yes. I hate, I hate when it's uh, uh, positioned 
in that way, but yes. Well, what is it? Well, how would you position it? Well, I, you know what? It's one of those things where I feel like no one wants to admit mm -hmm. bad childhood drama. Right. It also just feels like so far away at this point. Because you're old. That, <laughs> and also I've probably done a, a bang up job of ignoring said trauma. Yeah. Since seven seconds after the trauma began. Which of course is healthy. Right. Betterhelp.com slash WTN. If I ever write a book, it'll be like ignoring trauma yeah. 101. Yeah, no, no, no. So I, I feel like you've done a great job kind of unearthing <laughs> and learning how to approach it. Well, I think the, oddly enough, Michelle Kari coming, mm -hmm. bringing up the whole idea of couples therapy. Yeah. That sounded fun enough or like not, uh, I guess, not not fun enough to at least try. Yeah. Because I remember like going into that first episode. Episode. Episode, the first session. Going into the first session, I remember both of us being like, if we don't like it, yeah, we we'll don't just, have to keep yeah, going yeah, with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think like too, with the approach of it being a premarital course. Yeah. It like instead like it it's not because they're not therapists. Right. They're not therapists. Right. They are relationship coach. life relationship coaches. Yeah. Right. So going into it knowing that it's a premarital course and it's um like six sessions and it kind of has a start and end to it. And there's categories that you don't have to necessarily stick to, but and I mean we can talk more about it because I feel like we're doing our last session this week, actually, yeah. I think. Um, but it's I feel like that was a great intro. What I liked about it was because they're not therapists mm -hmm. and because it's not a, we're starting with no end point. Yes. It was very easy to go, can I wrap my head around doing this for six, one and a half, two hour sessions and it will be over at max 12 hours from now kind yeah. of thing. Yes. And what I liked about it was because we were doing it together, it was very easy to talk about it mm -hmm. post, uh, whether it was because it was awkward or because it was insightful or whatever together. Versus just being alone in your thoughts. They're like, this was stupid. I shouldn't have done this. I wonder if I could skip next week. Mm -hmm. Like having it be something that you would disappoint other people by not showing up and doing it and doing the homework is helpful for me. Okay. Right? Do you feel like that was a, like the introduction to start individual therapy? Um, This time around, yeah. Yeah. Because I feel like I've... I've done couples therapy once before. Myself included as well. It did not go well. Same. <laughs> but I'm glad I did at the time too. Same. Because like a therapist job is so interesting. Yep. And I wonder how much of it is, I mean, I'm sure there's like a level of putting bias to the side and just like seeing through the, like, yeah, you know, yeah. the facts. But also there's got to be a level at, at some point where someone's like, holy shit, you are unbearable. Run, just go kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure that you can't actually say that. But also I feel like there's a level of, well, they kind of say it. Yeah. But no, this was interesting because they're the youngest coaches, mm -hmm. like age-wise to us that I think I've ever interacted with or would even consider. And I'm glad it came as a recommendation because I don't know if I would have picked them, but I'm glad we did yeah. end up going and hanging with them and just like going through their exercises. Because mm -hmm. I'm someone who, no matter what the exercise is, I want to like game that to be done with it as quickly as possible and move on or put it off as long as possible, ADHD, and get to it at the very last second so mm -hmm. I can just like speed through it. Hopefully it'll be good enough to turn in and like move on. But this was good because it was like a good warm up to thinking about me with you in a non stressful, pressure filled environment. Right, right, right. And I think also too, it helps I think gives space for the things that we're working on as a couple and also yeah. things that you want to work on individually. Yeah, because I, I would not have gone into couples pre-marital -marit coaching class, mm -hmm. whatever, before it thinking any of the issues that I've been trying to address outside of it were something that were timely and should be addressed this fall. Did um did some of the stuff that we cover in premarital um coaching like connect to ADHD? Yes, do you think? Definitely. But not because it was that anybody asked me about it. Yeah. Because that question was not being asked. Right. I think it was the connections that were being made. Right. Well, yeah. like I think with ADHD, it's such a shittily uh understood mm -hmm. 
I think it just looks so different in so many different people too, that it's like, especially in women too, like just like yeah. what I've understood and like have learned yeah. in this process of learning more on behalf of like you having it is that especially in women, it can look so different because the way that women mask their ADHD right. and find coping mechanisms are, are it, it, it just can look so different. It's the coping mechanisms. That's I think the issue. Everyone's coping mechanisms look very differently from the outside, even mm -hmm. though they all have similar themes. Right. And I think the whole idea of admitting that I have or had have a learning disorder or disability, is it both? Is it one or the other? I think it's a disorder. Either I one. I don't know, it could be both. But perfect example of like, I've never put a title to that in my head. Right. I just know I have it. Right. But it's like being able to think through all the issues that, you know, when I'm writing down like something that is, as far as I'm concerned, not ADHD related, mm -hmm. but all of the answers kind of stop at the same place mm -hmm. without a really explanation outside of like, oh, because of this same common denominator that gets attached to everything that ends up not really being what you want it to be, but it's also part of everyday life. Mm -hmm. So like, I think it like opened the door for that. And you're just very good about being very open and positive when it comes to anything mental health related. Oh yeah. I mean, I've been through the fucking ringer with it. And so- But that doesn't mean you necessarily need to be- That's true. Good at hearing somebody else's problems. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Take the compliment. Okay, thank you. Um, but yeah, no, I- <laughs> And so then how does this all tie back to Thanksgiving? Oh my God. When I tell you that, like, I can tell my mom when I got there, didn't think, I don't think she fully uh, internalized how much I was going home by myself spend time with her, but also like, we should talk. Right. Because I think, and maybe this is a single mom, son thing. Maybe this is a single parent, kid. I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. there's something to be said about parents who want what's best for their kid mm -hmm. and use that as a guiding light mm -hmm. to any outcome or any decision. And it's almost like a get out of jail free card that I don't think they actually want to play, but they get comfort knowing like they do want what's best at the time. But sometimes what you want, what's best and what's actually best are very different. And in hindsight, if it doesn't get addressed after decades, it's like it compounds. Right, so right. For well, me, I feel like, go sorry, ahead. Go ahead. No, wait, for me, ADHD was not a thing, at least for me as a kid ever. There was never a time where like that was going to be an admitted presence. Yeah. N nor treatment, nor that as an excuse, nor that as a reason, nor that mm -hmm. as a cause or a nothing. So I think it got to the point for me, if something that kind of gets in the way of everyday life, that really only happens in your head, doesn't get addressed, you kind of create the version of yourself and the life that you think is necessary without even thinking about it. And it doesn't make sense to anybody else but you. And if someone like your mom isn't a part of that conversation when you're a kid, and it is a point of contention over this dumbest shit and also big things day after day, week after week, year after year, mm -hmm. you get to the point where it's like the version that you present to people you do care about and you're supposed to be able to be honest with is so far removed from the version that you actually live that it, it gets to the point where it's like, if you don't have a come to Jesus moment, it's very difficult to get back on track. What's so interesting too, is that you had a teacher yeah. Oh, approach yeah. you about this. And in what grade were you in? Like grade four or five maybe? Yeah, I mean, my mom like remembered this. Yeah. And I, I remember it now, but it was like, no, it was like the school nurse. Right. Apparently. Oh yeah, school nurse. No, this right. would have been my freshman year of high school. Or oh, seventh, okay, okay. Because I'm in the same building for seventh, eighth through high school, like end of high school. Okay. So it could have been any age there. Mm -hmm. But apparently the school nurse like called my mom and was like, hi, um, here's a really difficult thing to hear. And I know that because I struggle with the same thing that I am fully confident that Jeremy has. But like, I guess the nurse was like, hey, your son has ADHD. Right. By the way, one of my my boys has ADHD. The other two do not. I have ADHD. Like this is not something where I'm like, oh, I have nothing. Like I, it's something that I've learned to live with. And so I guess she sat her down and told her all these things. Mm -hmm. And as my mom now admits, she immediately was like, I cannot believe this woman is 
projecting all of her issues yeah. onto my son. Right. And I think the other side of it is just like the whole hyperactive component, which even when I was a kid, there was ADD and ADHD. Right, there was two different ones. And now it's just ADHD. Yeah. But like the whole idea of it uh, centered around your attention and your inability to focus versus I think it's a lot more on like hyper fixation mm -hmm. or like what your energy is created to get your mind off of whatever you're supposed to be doing 24 seven. Mm -hmm. It's so difficult to describe to anybody who doesn't get distracted for no apparent reason all the time and always has and always will, but it makes so much sense to me. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. As the holiday season is upon us, I've been thinking a lot about how my family approaches gift giving. In our household, it's always been less about the material gifts and more about the experiences and time spent together. Yeah, but I like gifts. And Jeremy likes gifts. <laughs> Whether it's cooking a family meal, watching movies all day, or playing hours of Catan, which is 100% on the schedule for this holiday season, those moments are our way of showing love and appreciation for each other. But it's also important to remember to give a little something to ourselves during this season. And what better gift than the gift of self-care and mental well-being? Take it from me, it is very, very easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle, forgetting to take a moment for one's self. Whether it's starting therapy or just allowing ourselves some downtime, self-love is key. And if you're considering therapy, I'd recommend checking out BetterHelp. It's a fantastic online platform that makes therapy convenient and flexible to fit your schedule. You just fill out their brief questionnaire and they match you with a licensed therapist. And the best part, you can switch therapists at any time without any additional charges. Therapy is such an important factor in keeping my anxiety at bay during the holiday season. Our, our anxiety. Our anxiety. Yes. <laughs> this year we are hosting my parents and also Jeremy's mom. And I'm so excited, but trying to get everything ready on top of the absolute stress that is Vlogmas has been a lot. I never take my therapy sessions for granted because it allows me to take an hour to just focus on myself and what is a better gift than that. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash WT9 today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash WT9. It's so interesting learning more about it because obviously my brain just works differently than yours. And so how I've explained it to people, if I only had like, you know, a couple sentences, I was like, if Jeremy's brain can prioritize that there are six things that he has to do today and he has no problem writing out the list of six things. So like knows the tasks that need to be completed, knows when they need to be, they need to be completed by, how to complete them, but he'll get stuck and spend the entire day doing a task that would prepare him to start task six. But honestly, that would be even more productive than some days. Yeah, right, right. Or you might be doing something that just is just not so far from the list of one to six. I mean, for anyone who's ever had something due at X amount of time, a, a really, really long time in advance and up until two hours before they haven't started it, but now their underwear and sock drawer is labeled, organized, and all but has like the Dewey Decimal System applied to it, mm -hmm. they can relate. Like you just find the ability to care about something that you have been putting off completely unrelated to whatever it is mm -hmm. with no limits. It's it's so interesting. Like the more that I learn and then the more that I see it happening in real time now, it's just so, it's so interesting. But it's hard because it doesn't present the same way that so many other like, mental disorders do, you yeah. know what I mean? Because I feel like some people would see someone doing a task that feels unrelated and being like, why the fuck are you spending time doing that? Like, just be right. smarter, like prioritize your time, like just or, get on task. Well, at least they're doing something. At least they're not just sitting around doing nothing all day. Right, right. But I feel like people with ADHD don't usually do nothing. Well, I think it's a, a mixture of, of, I mean, like if I've learned anything, there are a lot of flavors. Yeah, true. And my point is that there's so many things that are that are very close to looking like ADHD mm -hmm. that I think contribute to even more really counterproductive like diagnoses that just continue to like veer people off. Like I, I remember as a kid, like even when I went to the doctor when I was in junior high, I don't know, I was somehow finessed a doctor before I graduated high school mm -hmm. to consider the option. And I remember they wanted to put me on a medication at the time. Yeah. And it just never came to fruition. Because you had to have a, a parent sign off on it, you think? That and also just like, the, oh, you don't need that. That's, right. that's not a thing. The, yeah. You certainly shouldn't be taking that long term. That, that's, right. that's not right. it. Right. Right. And right. like, you know, for me, it's like, I 
I don't think that there's a world where everyone needs to be on the same page as their parent. Mm -hmm. But maybe for me, because my family's so small, really just her at this point, the need to kind of like figure out whether or not I was going to be able to be honest with her about anything, you know, so whether it's stupid or important, right, was enough for me to try to like want to figure this out before the holidays, before we get married, before mm -hmm. there's even more ways to be able to put this conversation onto the back burner. I think one of the most impactful things that your mom said kind of at the beginning of this journey that you two have been on is that she wants to be part of the solution. Right. And that was, that was a turning I think point. that was a turning point for you guys in your relationship. Well, and like, you know, I, I don't want to put like all of our family drama on, on totally. blast, but like the, there, there was a comment when we were all together at Thanksgiving or not Thanksgiving, whatever we were. When we in, went back for the Canada trip Canada for everyone. Trip, yeah. That everyone, everyone in the room heard that like highlighted and kind of illuminated the idea that, oh, Jeremy's not actually, this is the one time where when he makes a big deal about how, uh, little wiggle room or little room there was for this to exist as a kid. Yeah. He's actually not being facetious with how uh, non-existent this is in my mom's head. Yeah. And I think like, it's it's so hard because I think the generation that our parents are from, um, my mom worked in healthcare in and right. around also mental health care. So I think that her position was a little bit different, but um, like, I think the generation of our parents' age is very adamant to, just, uh, and all with good intentions, but they just, you know. Going back to the first part. Yeah, it's it's all what's with good intention. It's just what's best for you. But I think that it's just not, it's become so much more normalized within our generation now that it's, we're, we're quick to consider so many different disorders in, in, a, in a helpful way, I think. But I think the generation before us is, is a little more um, indecisive around where they stand on it or even, yeah, I thought that was a really nice way to say. Yeah, I, I think they're, <laughs> they they're, they're, reject it. <laughs> right. And I, I, you know, when I, when I hear and when I'm trying to describe in great detail how I've felt, how I feel, how I want to feel, you know, to someone who has, quote unquote, my best to mind, and, and I believe her, it, it really just comes down to the way that I think they viewed anything as it pertains to mental health was a, a, well, what can we do to treat this thing mm -hmm. so that it goes away? Mm -hmm. Or like this problem that is, you know, unavoidable in this person's life. How do we address this problem? And it's not like, okay, everyone is a walking bag of chemistry and we all have, you know, things that are a little bit uh, more or less in whatever direction. And that it really is that like that vague. It really is that general. And it's just like, how do we find a way to not get so bogged down by any one thing that's going on in our life to like make it a problem, make it something that like needs to be addressed in a negative way versus finding a way to integrate whatever your solution is into your life. So it's not like something that just like continues to keep you back from doing everything you want to do. Did you have a plan with your mom oh. when you approached this? What's funny is like the, the, the therapist that I found in LA that I really like, who's much more relationship focused. And I, I, I've been dead set on finding a shrewd executive function coach to just like yell at me and like make me become the level of efficient that I've been in the past when things are good, but like find a way to like create a model that I can replicate day over day. And she was so good about giving me like the language that is not partial or not like loaded with emotions, but mm -hmm. like the language in and of itself, uh, I'm trying to like remember some of it that is uh, shareable, but it's just like, it's interesting the way to like to, to put things, if you get a response, ah, the sentence that she gave me that was like, whoa, was if if I'm I'm trying to explain how I feel and I feel like I'm not being heard or I am being heard and I'm not on the same page or we're just looking at two two very clear things we're not even disagreeing about that they happened it's simply to call out that you feel sorry that someone who loves you in my case my mom was so disappointed in everything that kept us from being on the same page for so many years. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't think any mom or any dad or any parent or any loved one wants to hear from somebody that they're receiving empathy from someone who believes and has now like characterized their feelings as disappointment. I mean, that's the harshest word. 
That's always like, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Like you hear that all the time. And like, you know what I mean? Like eh. it must be hard to be so disappointed with yeah. me. Oh! Not, and like, which is, a, it's a harsh thing to say, but it's like, yeah. at the end of the day, if truly, if I see this, I think it's this, you see this, you think it's something different. I go, it must be really difficult to like, look at me knowing that this is how I, I view what's going on mm -hmm. and disagree with it so wholeheartedly that like, you'd be willing to tell me that I am wrong about myself to the point where you'd rather just take two separate paths. Right. I think creating boundaries is just so important in this. Yes and no though. Because to me, I created a boundary that was too strong. Yeah. And it alienated my, my, my own, I don't know, uh, life on a day-to-day -day basis from someone who doesn't want to be alienated. I don't know. Yeah, but I, I just don't know if there was another option for you. Yeah. I mean, I think that being adopted and spending a lot of time alone as a mm -hmm. kid lends itself to you and your thoughts. And so for me, me putting up, like me navigating life by myself or like putting up barriers because I needed to was not like a learned, like, yes, I'm sure I learned it eventually, but like that was something that came very naturally to me. Like you needed to do this. Otherwise you're going to be in a world of pain and suffering for just being a kid. Mm -hmm. I think now that you two are like individuals in the world, you know, who can see each other as equals and there's not that like maternal uh, tiered. Well, there's always gonna be there, that. There's, yes. there's always that thing, but you know what I mean? It's like, she's not, she's not your provider. She's yeah. not the one who's paying your bills and taking care of you and putting food on the table. I think it's easier to adjust those boundaries and barriers and yeah. be able to have the communication that you guys were able to have yeah. when you're older and you're not living under the same roof and you're, it just, it's just a different dynamic now. But I also think there's a level of I don't care how much self-directed research, thought, uh, and well-meaning whatever I put into it by myself, until you hear words back from somebody who doesn't have a dog in the fight, and obviously any therapist or any doctor will want what's best for their patient, for sure. But like hearing someone characterize things that are simply memories or how I feel into words that are so real is very helpful. And I don't think that you can do that in a vacuum. What do you mean? I just don't think that you can come to some conclusions without speaking to someone who's not directly already like in your circle has like, you know, already has a preconceived notion, like being able to speak to a therapist that is hearing things for the first time. Oh, and I see, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. observing mm -hmm. what they're processing as you try and be as honest as you can with your memories. Mm -hmm. It also is like, like, ooh, like you, you get done with sessions, you're like, like Zoom close. You go, Whew. Yeah, therapy's heavy sometimes. Yeah. And therapy's heavy. And I've always said to every friend that I've ever like referred or like encouraged to do therapies that like you only get out of it what you put into it. And like sometimes when you put your whole Jira Muslim into it, you're tired after. I, I I feel like when I get out of it, I go, <laughs> that was a lot. Yeah. But what do we talk about? But that's that a lot. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then when you like you you like I feel like it's the shower thoughts afterwards, you go, holy shit. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I mean, but also like I I don't know if I mean I think timing's so important. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's, I think the right advice at the wrong time is the wrong advice. Amen, sister. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what are your thoughts on the whole, like from your perspective? Of how this all unfolded? Well, fortunately for me, you haven't had a quarter life crisis in a long time. I know that like, I need to get- Oh, it's coming. I need to get through my oh, stuff. Oh, it I'll, is I'm coming. I'm getting through, I'll get through my stuff, I promise. You know that by the end of Vlogmas, I will be spiraling as I do. I can feel it bubbling up. I you can actually, feel it bubbling. But I will say you do a great job of, well, great and also bad of putting whatever you need on the back burner if I need something, which is very sweet and nice. But I, I could see you trying to not be as open and honest about how you're feeling if I was really going through it at the same time. Oh yeah, obviously. No one wants to pile more shit on someone's full of shit pile. Right, but I'm also someone who's like, <laughs> I, I would have historically leaned into a, okay, who can be mean? to me that I respect and won't get mad at for being mean to me. And I'll, I'll try and fix it whatever way that they think I should fix it. Like that, that for sure would be a solution in my past that I would go. A solution for what? To try and new, like, oh, I just gonna like, I have to find somebody who's kind of dealt with this before or can distract me enough with whatever they want me to do that I'll, I'll not worry about feeling bad about myself and that'll get me out. Mm -hmm. For sure, that's advice I would have taken in the past. Right, 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 right. I mean, I think from an outsider perspective, I think that, I think I agree, the timing is right. And I think that this was a great opportunity for you and your mom to have like the perfect amount of days together, yeah. isolated. I was like, I will be in LA 
enjoy your bonding time. Well, I thought for sure I was going to like wait for a day or two to like bring it up. Yeah. Night number one. Let's I know. You didn't right sleep it. the night before. And I was like, Jeremy, you should have said that I did. Just tell me what's on night one. Maybe we should wait a little bit to get a little sleep. Definitely got, I feel like a little bit more of a um, raw, unedited version of it. But right, yeah. right, right, right. It unfolded a little more naturally, I think, than yeah. you had intentionally planned. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I think overall going into it, I think the timing was right. I think you also did the right thing by kind of giving your mom some material. Oh yeah. That was, I think that was a key piece that I think was very helpful is that you gave your mom some material that you thought summarized and described in a clear and concise way just to give her some background. Cause I think like having something like that, some material that can be like your middle ground of honest truth of being like, okay, this is what ADHD is, how it pertains to other people. And so it's not emotionally tied to you or her right. or your childhood or anything that's happened in or the past. Or anyone she even knows a oh, little right. bit about. Exactly. Some it's preconceived like, notion. But like this can be like your, like these are the words of truth here of what ADHD is. So I think having that as like the core of just like a definition and how it applies to other people. I think for her to have a few months to absorb and process by herself coming into this, I think was probably put you 10 steps ahead before the conversation even started. Because I think yeah. like, working backwards to try and have her understand a definition. Cause it's not even just, just, just a definition. It's that like how it all applies to you and how, like what that means for her. You know what I mean? Like that's an emotional process as well, I think too. But I also think she needed to hear, and I, I if anyone's read the book, it's like the most like go-to book for ADHD, but uh, Driven to Distraction. And the mm -hmm. reason I suggest that one for her after reading so many books that I think were so average, like this didn't like, it didn't really touch on anything that like felt real to me was that it's, for the majority of at least the, the first large portion of it, it's all stories as it impacted children. Right. And I know that my mom has a always open soft spot for any kid that mm -hmm. needs help that doesn't get it or even that gets it. And so her seeing and hearing, I feel like different stories from- That uh, version. And also it's not just like, oh, the kid that like couldn't sit still and was just bouncing off the walls and like, had, it's the total opposite of those kids. Yeah. That's what you think of when they're like, oh man, that kid has ADHD because like they're sprinting around the classroom. Right. Like that's what I feel like we grew up learning the definition was. Right. And she would always say, well, you were just, so you could always, of course, pay attention to someone you were interested in talking yeah. to. And I would say, yeah, I would find the energy to find a social scenario that would allow me to put all my energy this way. Mm -hmm. And hopefully at the end of it, the person I was talking to had the authority to go, oh, don't worry about that. Yeah. Really? Okay. But I think, I think overall it went well. I think obviously it was an totally. emotional couple of days for both of you. I mean, I think the, the thing I didn't expect, at least as much, certainly not as much as like it's, it's happening is, and I feel like people our age might be able to relate is like, when I sent this book to her and I told her before Thanksgiving, I want you to read this and we can talk about it and other things when we're together in person. I didn't anticipate the amount of self-realization and self, I feel like reflecting that like my own mother put into this and of just like, oh, I definitely relate to this more than I anticipated. Right, right. And, you know, I'm sure everything is to a degree linked with your parents to in some level of it. And this is not any different. So her kind of going through in real time, trying to figure out how, oh, this is definitely sounding like the pattern that I kept falling into with my own son it kind of reminds me of a lot of the things that have gone on in my own life too. I'm like, because huh. ADHD is genetic, right? Well, yes and no. It's very much a misunderstood, right? Overall, yeah. Uh, like, I, I think it's a learning disorder that is very much just now being understood from like a brain perspective and what it looks like when the the brain is firing in weird ways to mm -hmm. to distract someone from the thing that they know better than to be distracted from, right? But it's like asking somebody anybody who's sober, hey, is it a good idea to drive after you've drunk a bunch of shit? No. And you could even ask somebody who was drunk at the time, would it be more dangerous for you to drive drunk? Yes, they would even say that. They just don't care. Mm -hmm. Like they're, they're not thinking about that at the time. And that like, it very much relates with me in the sense of, it's not like people with ADHD don't know better. That has nothing to do with it. It's just whatever curiosity or whatever is driving them to not do whatever it is that they are supposed to be doing, end quote, is so much louder than any 
thing could ever say or do to make like sense to somebody that's on their brain. Right. I think um, the therapist that you're working with individually has also been really helpful, like with her focusing more on how ADHD can manifest in relationships as well, yeah. too. Like, I think that there's been a lot of learnings there as well, too, and how yeah. to be like a partner to support someone who has ADHD. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm pretty perfect. So there's that. No, I think mm. I, that's probably like the, the hardest part. The, re, the self-realization within a relationship mm -hmm. that comes from like being honest with yourself and you're like, oh, that is a fundamental problem that I am the root cause of that I, I will need to be very cognizant of to fix and I, and I need to fix it. Mm -hmm. And it's on me to do so. And if I don't do it, I'm only hurting my partner. Right, right, right. Like it's, a, uh, it's very easy to spiral when you start thinking about those things. Yeah. But I also think you kind of have to go through it. Yeah. 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 No, I think, I think, I think you're right. I think also too, like you kind of not necessarily hitting rock bottom, but I think you getting fed up and overwhelmed to the point of like starting this new journey with, you know, mending the relationships and understanding it more and communicating about it more and doing the therapy. It's like, there's gotta be a catalyst at some point to, to start that journey. There is, but I'm lucky that I have the time to do it right now. That's what I'm saying. It's like the timing was perfect. Because if I didn't have the time, I would have put this off forever. Forever. So I think it's difficult to tell someone like, you should do it today. It's really hard. Yeah. Because if you don't have the time or space to do it, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know when I would have got around to it. Yeah. yeah I don't. Totally makes sense. Uh, didn't mean for this to get incredibly heavy at the end of the episode. Well, it went, it, it's a net positive overall. Yeah, net positive overall. But it's still very much a, and I would love to hear people's recommendations because man, is there a lot of out of pocket ADHD content out there. Some of it's really good. Yeah. But like the amount of things that I, the amount of like helpful information that I hear that I would love to, uh, I wish that I could tell a content creator who is very passionate about making short form easy to digest, entertaining, quick content so that TikTok could do its thing. I would love for that to be out there. It's just difficult to find. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to, it's hard to keep that always on kind of like new information funnel if it's really difficult to kind of pinpoint where you feel like people are talking in a way that makes sense to you. We're all gonna be on ADHD talk now though. I would, lo I would love that. Love it. Move over electrician Send talk. Send me all the links. Tag me in all the things because I, 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 I'm not at a, an excess by any means mm -hmm. of new content that makes me go, oh my God, that's yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I learned about a website today. So I watched Saltburn last night, this new movie with Jacob Elordi and Barry, ah, what's his fucking last name? Um, Barry, Barry, the main character is Barry, Barry, whatever. Barry. Um, and his name is Oliver in the movie. In Saltburn that I will never be able to unsee. And and so there's like, it's been going around on TikTok where people have been posting their just like raw, real reactions of going into this movie, not knowing what it's about. Did I see one of the more unhinged ones? You saw one of the more unhinged ones. We made Jeremy sit down and watch the bathtub scene. If you've seen Saltburn and I, I don't wanna give any spoilers. I feel like an unwarranted spoiler, like unsolicited is just like not the vibe. But God damn, if you really want, there's people on TikTok who have um, shared basically the whole, plot of everything and like the crazy unhinged scenes. Um, but where I was going with this is that I learned that there's a website for people who have really, really severe emetophobia where you, people will submit a movie and tell you the timestamps oh, really? and how many scenes in a movie are like not safe to watch if you have severe emetophobia because the, Jeremy and I always say in every movie and every episode of every single fucking show, someone throws up. And I feel like you probably would have never noticed that. Never. Unless you are obviously with it, me. And it's not like, I don't enjoy, if I wasn't right, with but you. you don't like You don't have like a second no. thought about it. Yeah, no. exactly. But like I could tell you every movie, every episode of every show I've ever seen where someone gets sick. Which because, is every show ever. Which is every show ever. And we, we like joking to say that now because it's crazy. Like now that you are cognizant of it, you see that it's every piece of media. It's crazy. I feel like I'm on high alert because when I see it's like happening, I will try and make like- Jeremy will just scream, I'll go, ah! I will, I'll just make obscenely <laughs> loud noises <laughs> in Lauren's direction. Yeah, exactly. So she doesn't hear someone retching. Exactly. And so anyway, there was, uh, I, someone DM me and was like, oh my God, how did you get through Salt? And I, I read on this website that there were five scenes that were unsafe. And I consider it just exposure therapy. Yes. But, but I was like, what a great resource for people who have really severe metaphobia. I actually think that that's a, per this, this is a perfect job for AI. Yeah, truly. Perfect. Truly. Like type in your triggers, 
so that every time you're about to like, as opposed to like, because we don't need necessarily to see that, hey, this, if you're epileptic, this might not be the thing to watch. That's not helpful for me. But there are other things that would be helpful that I would right. love to be able to right. add in. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a great product that someone should build. Maybe we should cut this out of the podcast so that you can build it. <laughs> I, I'm so busy trying to wrap my head around how we haven't figured out more like actually helpful tools for ADHD. Well, babe, maybe that's your calling. Well, if I figure it out, you'll all hear about it. Anyways, I um, hope you had Merry a Christmas. great Christmas. Well, for those who are, um, you know, uh, not able to have that conversation with their parents at the dinner table this year, maybe next year. Or maybe, yeah, like I, I think that you and your mom have had an incredibly turbulent relationship over the years. And like, if things aren't good within your family now, it's not to say that down the road that things cannot be mended. When I tell you that the turning point went from things were not good to things became calloused. Mm -hmm. And the calloused portion was when I was fearful that like the next step is like just nothing here. Yeah. So I'm glad we got it back on track. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And Donna got her dress for the wedding. Donna is more prepared for my wedding than I am. Perfect. And that's on ADHD. Perfect. So everyone thank Lauren for dealing with me. And I will take that compliment. Tell me all the nice things about putting up with Jeremy's shit. Yeah. Merry I'm Christmas. Working on it. <laughs> uh, Merry Christmas. So we'll see everyone next year. Yeah, we'll see everyone next year. Except for we're going to be recording it in 2023. So it mm. feels a little bit like a, we're recording on probably like Vlogmas Day 11 well, or 12 or so. Also, uh, happy post one year engagement anniversary. Oh my God. Yeah. That's coming up soon. It will have already. We missed our five year dating anniversary. Like, by weeks, we literally both looked at each other the other day when we were um, in on a little brand trip about wedding planning. We were like, holy fuck, did we miss our anniversary? Yeah. We super missed it. Oops. Super, super missed it. But also, I, I um, it, for those of you that are still here, I do actually enjoy people who DM me about ADHD. So I will get to those. Okay. If you do DM me on those, just don't use that as a um, lure. Eh, whatever. If you can get my attention, it's all yours. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. It's not personal. <laughs> uh, I love you. I'll see you next year. Okay. See you next year. I was talking to them. Oh, you know, I, 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 love just, you. I didn't say. Latvia. Yeah. yeah exactly. I'll see you next year. Okay. Okay. Goodbye. Bye.